Alright guys, in this video I just wanted to really quickly go over a couple of different things with the transforms, also with uh, how to snap um, and how to use the discrete snap scales and the discrete moves in order to help your uh, get your objects in order together. Um, first thing I kind of want to go over this is the snaps. You have the little icons up here at the top, right here. Um, each one of these is a different kind of snap, okay, that you can use. The hot keys, okay, are going to be X. You can see as I'm, I'm tapping that it, it changes. Uh, that's for grid snap. C is going to be for your curve snap. V is going to be for your point snap. Those are going to be the main main ones you're going to be using. All right. In that, in this case, I have this box here, and if I hold down the X key and I drag, okay, what it's going to do is it's going to snap to each one of these grid points. All right. So as I'm moving it around, it's going to snap from point to point right along this grid, okay? Even up in the y-axis, also back into the z, all right? Each time that I use one of these snaps, you'll notice that the center here is going to change into a circle, all right? That's how I know I'm, I've got my, my snaps going on. All right, so the C, C snap works for curves. We don't have any curves in our scene yet, but what it would allow us to do is if there's a vector or a line in the scene, it'll allow that to snap along that line. Um, the V snap is for a point, for a vertice. So, for example, if I wanted this object whose pivot point, that's this thing right here, is at the point of this, cute, of this cone, if I want to snap it to the corner, if I hold down V and I drag it, you'll see that it instantly snaps to that point or this point or that point. Okay, this is a real quick, easy way to have your make sure your objects all line up. Okay, so that's with the vertex snap. All right, this is one of those things that's going to be very, very necessary if you're trying to line up, say, two objects. Okay, the next one I want to show you about is this thing called discrete move, discrete scale. Um, this is a lot of icon over here in this corner. This is your tool panel. And if I move it over, you'll see I have tool settings suddenly up, up here over here. Um, one of the problems I've been noticing people run into is if you don't have your axis set to uh, world and it's set to object or local, what will happen is, is if you rotate your object, okay, you see how the gimbal is rotating right with this object? That's because it's set to local, which means that when I rotate this way and then I rotate this way, then there's no way for me to, to really know which way is truly up and which way is going to be truly side uh, left, right, or down. All right. So what you want to make sure you do is set this to world. All right. So that now, as I move it, the gimbal stays true. Okay. This is really, really useful for modeling, keeping it set to world, so that you can maintain uh, your proper ups and downs and lefts and rights. Um, but yet, when you're doing animation, a lot of times you're going to want to switch to more of a local constraint so that you'll understand um, how the object is facing relative to uh, other objects when you're animating. Um, it's just a different way of, of manipulating the objects. Um, so the discrete scale has to do, or discrete move has to do with the J key, okay? Um, there is a, a little uh, point that comes up here, this little checkbox for the discrete rotate, and it has a step size, okay? This also works for the move tool. So, for example, if I hold down the button, you see that the discrete move comes up and the step size is 1. So if I hold down J and I'm moving it, it almost looks like, again, snap to grids because I'm moving it step size of 1. If I change the discrete move to, say, 0.5 for my step size, all right, I'm going to turn it off, but now it's going to work that way, then you'll notice it'll snap in between, okay? So that's really useful for lining up your objects with each other. Um, and instead of using just a grid snap, maybe using uh, using a discrete scale as well. If it ever gets hung up and, and wants to move or rotate or whatever uh, along this, these different limits, um, what you want to do is make sure that that's unchecked when you don't have the J key pressed down. Um, so that's a real quick way of, of, of seeing what you, what you have going on. All right, so in the case of the rotating, for example, I've got this kind of box here, and it's kind of tilted to a wrong, the wrong direction. Um, what I want to do is kind of start with one axis, and again, with the J key, instead of it being a free rotation um, like that, with the J key, you're going to be able to snap your rotation. In this case, it's going to be along 15 
Uh, it'll be 15 degrees, okay, which divides nice and easy into 360. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of line it up uh, as best I can, all right? Um, try to get it nice and nice and square. If I can't figure it out from this view, what I can do is come into this view and into all my orthographics and just kind of line up the object, okay? Now this won't always work um, as far as lining objects up, but I've just found this to be kind of helpful, especially if uh, the object was rather true or uh, whatever before it started being rotated. So now that looks pretty well good. And if you look over here, I have a 14.74. I think that'll probably be good as a 15. A negative 45.6. So let's change that to a negative 45. And then this 0, 0.0, let's just change that to a 4 or as to a zero. So now if we look, it looks pretty gosh darn true. Okay, so now we can take this block and if we were to try to position it, let's see what happens. If we can kind of position it till it's lined up next to uh, the other block over here. So I'm just kind of using the J key and just snapping it into position. Okay, so that it kind of, kind of lines up. All right, 